Hi, thank you for joining me. My name is Jolene Morris, and in this video, I will share with you what I've learned about omega-3, omega-6, and the omega-3 to 6 ratio. First, let me clarify that I am not a medical professional. I am a mathematics educator. As such, nothing I share with you in my keto videos should be taken as medical advice. The purpose of my vlog is to share with you my keto journey and what works for me. I encourage you to comment below if you have helpful suggestions or positive responses for me. As of four days ago, I have been practicing a keto lifestyle for exactly two years. If you have not yet seen my first video on why I adopted a keto lifestyle, there is a link to it in the upper right-hand corner. Basically, I had all the symptoms listed on this page. These are also all the symptoms of chronic inflammation. In studying ways to reduce my inflammation, I kept reading about the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. As a mathematics teacher, I immediately focused on the term ratio. A ratio is merely a comparison of two values. In this case, the ratio is comparing the amount of omega-3 in the blood to the amount of omega-6. The ratio is used as a guideline to choosing foods that help your body achieve that ratio. The ideal ratio is 1 to 3 or 1 to 4, which means no more than four times as much omega-6 as there is omega-3. But those eating the standard American diet can have a ratio of 1 to 30 or 1 to 40 or higher. Too little omega-3 will make inflammation worse, but too much omega-6 will also make inflammation worse. So obviously, the objective here is to decrease the amount of omega-6 and increase the omega-3 at the same time in order to control that ratio. There is a widespread misconception that omega-6 is bad and omega-3 is good. The truth is that we need them both, just in the proper ratio. You can get an omega blood test to determine your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. Ask your medical doctor. The ratio blood test can also be done at home. The necessary kit can be purchased on Amazon for about $100. If you want more information about this at-home test, See the link in the video description below. Regardless of which way you go, you will want to discuss the results with a medical professional for advice on how to proceed. As I said on the previous slide, both omega-3 and omega-6 are essential, but the human body can't produce them. They are fatty acids that we take in from the foods we eat. Omega-3 fatty acids, which we should increase in our diet, come from foods such as fatty fish and dark green leafy vegetables. Omega-6 fatty acids, which we should decrease in our diet, come from foods such as seed oils and grains. Check out this side panel. When doing research, I found some interesting numbers about the omega-3 to 6 ratio. I knew that seed oils, such as canola, soybean, corn, and sunflower, and grains are often eliminated on a keto diet. But I didn't realize that grain-fed chicken is a poor meat choice when inflammation is especially high. I can certainly understand why grain-fed beef has a higher omega ratio, since all they eat is grain, which has 20 times more omega-6 than omega-3. Earlier in this video, I mentioned the symptoms I had two years ago when I started keto. The list is almost identical to the signs of not getting enough omega-3. The only sign of omega-3 deficiency I didn't have was depression. 
but perhaps with all those symptoms I was a little depressed. My research into omega-3 yielded a long list of benefits. It strengthens heart and the circulatory system, produces less joint pain, increased mobility, it helps with optimal brain function and vision, lowers inflammation and cholesterol, and some risk of cancers. It supports a positive mood, improves skin conditions such as my eczema, and boosts the immune system. So it's clear to me that while we get plenty of omega-6, we need to focus on increasing our omega-3 intake drastically. With the goal of improving my omega-3 levels, I made a more detailed list of the sources of omega-3. Cook with butter and ghee, coconut oil, beef tallow, lard, or pure olive oil, or palm oil. Fatty fish grass-fed beef and grass-finished beef, salad dressing and mayonnaise made with pure olive oil instead of seed oils, flax and chia seeds, and walnuts are also a good source of omega-6, but I don't eat too many of them. I do have a tablespoon on my dinner salad. And supplements. There are three supplement types that promise to improve our omega-3 levels. Fish oil. Until two months ago, I used to supplement with the krill oil pictured here. It provided 250 milligrams additional omega-3 each day. I liked it because it didn't have that fishy aftertaste, but I needed to check the expiration date to be sure it wasn't rancid or oxidized. Castor oil is another supplement I didn't consider. I remember the cartoons on TV from 60 years ago about children's reaction to the taste of castor oil. I just couldn't think about trying it to see if it's improved when the krill oil was available. Algae is a vegan alternative source of omega-3 that I discovered about two months ago. Fatty fish which are so high in omega-3, eat algae, and that's where they get their omega-3. So I decided to change my omega-3 supplement from krill oil to algae. There are several benefits to this change. The primary one is that the brand of algae that I use provides 1,000 milligrams of omega-3 daily and comes in a tasty, sugar-free gummy. So now, as I begin my third year practicing the keto lifestyle, here are the diet changes I'm going to make. I'll continue to eliminate all seed oils and grains. I will change the brand of olive oil I was buying. I discovered that it wasn't pure olive oil, but was diluted with canola oil. My previous salad dressing had seed oils as one of the ingredients. I have already changed my salad dressing and mayonnaise. I eat salmon every Saturday night, and I will continue to do that. I always spend a little bit extra to buy grass-fed and grass-finished ancestral blend grand beef from Force of Nature. This blend includes organ meats. I used to eat chicken several times a month. From now until my inflammation is completely normal and my omega-3 to 6 ratio is corrected, I will decrease the amount of chicken meals I make, or I will see if Whole Foods offers chicken that is not grain-fed. Up to last week, I had a sardine fish nugget breakfast once every other week. I started this week to make and eat sardine nuggets once a week. See the video on my breakfast number six. I will continue to eliminate prepackaged baked goods, and I will continue to take sugar-free algae gummies daily. 
Thank you for joining me today for a discussion of the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel, and if appropriate, click the like button below this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.